your life. Thank you very much. Okay, this is the May 3rd meeting of the Bike Walk Commission and had she not passed away, it would have been my mother's 100th birthday today. Oh, wow. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah, but she didn't quite make it, but anyhow. So um, the first order of business is public input and I see we have two members of the public. Um, would either one of you like to say anything? I think you can raise your hands and then uh, Norwalk Zooms 3 can let you speak. Okay, well, I will assume that means neither one of you wants to speak and that's fine. We welcome you to join us. So the next order of business, uh, by the way, um, does everybody have a copy of the agenda or should I display it? Does anybody not? Let's put it that way. Okay, uh, the next order of business is the approval of the April 5th minutes which were distributed with the agenda. Could I have a motion to accept the minutes? Okay, Tanner and accept. Uh, Sam. Were there any additions or corrections? Okay, if not, um, all those in favor, stick your hand up or say aye or do something. <laughs> okay. The next order of business is the chair's report. And um, first, of, first of all, I would like to thank Christine Basigli for writing a letter in support of his grant request for the commission. I think she did a fantastic job, particularly considering there was a very short time frame. So thank you very much, Christine. Okay. And uh, the, as I think you all know, the commission does have a Gmail mailbox, which gets five or six emails a year. And uh, we had one last month. <laughs> oh, uh, from Alan Kibbe, A-L-A-N-K-I-B-B-E. And he basically was saying that, uh, well, he said, I think that along with Additional bike lanes, we should be teaching bicyclists the rules of the road to reduce hazards to riders. Although this is an import, important for kids to keep them safe, I'm pretty aware when they zigzag en masse down the middle of the street popping wheelies. I probably did that 60 years ago myself. I'm more concerned about the togged up adult riders who don't understand that they should obey the same right of way practices as automobiles. And uh, he and I had several email exchanges and I did explain to him that the commission was definitely very much in favor of uh, both bicycle and pedestrian education, but uh, the problem that we have is figuring out how to do it. And I encouraged him to send any suggestions of which he didn't have any. So then I went to my go-to guy, Jim Travers, and uh, he is definitely planning some educational um, projects in the future. So I told him to please keep us apprised and we would very much like to partner with them. Um, this is not the first time we've had people suggest that we do more education. And I think we would all like to do that if we could just figure out a good way to do it. Um, I also met with uh, Paul Chenard who attended our meeting uh, last month. I did not realize that uh, last, last uh, the first Monday of April was also his first day as an employee of the Norwalk Transit District. Mm -hmm. um, but he is their manager of transportation planning and marketing. And Catherine Hebert, Hebert, who I think all of you know, is also a consultant to the Transit District as their special projects manager. So the three of us met and uh, Paul's very interested in working with us to gather information on bus use, both by pedestrians and bicyclists to plan possible route revisions, as well as some bus shelter uh, placements. So I told him we would be eager to work with him on all of those things. Um, based on my own personal experience, um, I don't know that I would use the bike racks on the buses if it were to do something like go to work where I needed to be there at a particular time. Because the problem is you can never be guaranteed that somebody else hasn't already used it and you'd have to wait for the next bus. 
but I told him that was just me. There may be other bicyclists who feel differently. And I do indeed see bicycles on buses from time to time. But I suggested to him that a more productive thing to do might be to talk with the pedestrian committee because there are definitely a lot of pedestrians that uh, use the bus because unless you happen to live at a bus stop, you have to walk to get the, to the bus. And I know Audrey did reach out to him and I know don't know Audrey whether you and Paul have been able to connect yet or not. Um, not not yet, Okay, but I, I aim to. Good. Well, I think also it was his first week on the job and he was very eager to do 7,000 things. And he may now have discovered that he maybe needs to pull back a little bit, but tenor. Yeah, so I did connect with Paul. If you want me to report on that now, I can. Sure. So uh, yeah, we actually ended up um, talking more about bikes than anything um, kind of independent of the transit district. Um, I think perhaps by the time I talked to him, he had um, kind of gotten his feet under him and realized what is tractable to work on and what is not. Um, okay. He's uh, one of one of his big assignments at the transit district is to do a ridership study of all the lines um, and figure out like what um, what is working, what's not, and how maybe they all go forward with um, with changing the the lines or the or the frequency of service. Um, but that he says that's a longer term project, like on the order of of several months or a year. Um, so what I ended up speaking with him mostly about is um, is biking and um, in particular he's he's got lots of experience working in in bike shops. Um, so I invited him to to work with me and Sam um, in, independently of the commission. Um, Sam and I, as most of you know, are putting together a a bike co-op, starting very small with just pop-ups. Um, but it looks like we're going to be getting him involved as another volunteer on that over the summer. Super. Alrighty, thanks, Tanner. And um, I also spoke at the April 19th meeting of the traffic authority in favor of the authority asking the state to return the travel lanes on Strawberry Hill for the northbound traffic to the way they were, which is a dedicated left-hand turn lane and the right-hand turn lane being for traffic going straight ahead or turning right. And they are indeed uh, planning to do that. And um, I also told them that we were um, thrilled to see that they approved the adoption of the bike lanes and sharrows on um, the Connecticut DOT Community Connectivity Grant, which is the east-west uh, route through the city that we've been working on for a number of years. Uh, and uh, I think Greg spoke about that last month as part of his report. And lastly, um, as you know, because I've been talking about it for the last couple of months, um, I do plan to step down at the end of my term on June 30th. And Tanner has uh, acceded to uh, become the next chair. And we've spoken to the mayor and the mayor has approved it. And unlike um, commissioners, uh, it's just the mayor that appoints the chair. So as of July 1st, Tanner will be the chair of the Bike Walk Commission. And I know that all of you will give him the support you've given me over the years uh, to continue to move the commission's work forward. And- um, uh, Congratulations, and, Tanner. Yeah, congratulations, Tanner. Thanks, Nancy. And uh, to fill my term beginning July 1st, um, I've asked the mayor to appoint Audrey Kassarin, who currently chairs our pedestrian committee and faithfully comes to all of our meetings. So um, as of July 1st, provided that the Common Council approves it, um, Audrey will actually be able to vote and move things and second things. <laughs> and her life will be complete. <laughs> no, I'd be honored to join the group, really, truly. And uh, Sam's uh, term also ends on July 30th because he is fulfilling uh, Deborah Lewis's unf unfinished term. And uh, I've asked the mayor to reappoint him for a three-year term. And again, uh, I'm sure that the Common Council will also approve um, his appointment as well. And that's all I've got for the uh, chair's report. Are there any questions? Okay. Can I make a, a comment briefly, Nancy? Sure. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for for your encouragement and your support. <laughs> um, when when Nancy and also others like Judd 
first talked to me about um, taking over for Nancy, I was very hesitant, um, especially just because of my um, my relative uh, newness to both the commission and to the this entire um, work. But uh, having all the encouragement from from people has really helped me to decide to take this on. Um, I I want to uh, especially thank Audrey um, and, and point out that. Uh, that the um, the invitation to, to join the commission is is in recognition of lots and lots of work that she's done, um, but I also want to point out that uh, the I hope that the work that we do will not just be limited to the seven that are formal commissioners. Um, I think Audrey's set a great example of how much somebody can do, how much impact somebody can have, without being a formal commissioner. And um, I hope to find lots more people who will do this work with us, um, outside just the seven people. Yes, there, there do seem to be people coming from lots of different corners uh, at, at the invitation of, of uh, Tanner and myself and uh, Nancy, I think you've done a wonderful, a wonderful job as, uh, as the chair of this com commission and recognize- I've had a lot of help. <laughs> yes, but your, your friendship and advice and guidance have helped me with the pedestrian committee and then I bring all of that in, in folds into this commission. So it's all part of a piece. That's well, a thanks. great continuum. So thank you, Nancy. Well, thank you. Okay, moving on to uh, committee reports. Greg, with your transportation planner update, which maybe we should change to TMP update. I don't know. That's fine. Yeah, we can we can certainly do that. Whatever you feels best. But right. in any case, Greg's update. <laughs> All right, so um, let's start out. I'll give you some updates uh, based on um, from our meeting last week. Um, just to reiterate, last uh, month we submitted the our ambitious grant proposal for for eighty point six million dollars worth of pedestrian facility projects, and we appreciate the commission putting together that letter in short order. I know it was uh, only over a few day period that we asked you to put that together, so it was a you know a rush to put it together, but we appreciate. Um, you know, you're doing that for us. Um, obviously, the we had 50 projects um, based on uh, last our the last uh, train station master plan. Um, you know, over 34 and a half miles of concrete sidewalks and uh, high priority pedestrian areas. Uh, I'm sure you all have seen. Um, so the city we received 1.4 million dollars uh, out of our ass for um, for West Rocks project, which includes new sidewalks throughout the entire corridor. And, improve, and improved pedestrian crossings as well. Um, now, obviously we asked for 18.6, which we knew was very ambitious and we knew that was probably not gonna happen, especially when we found out that Jim Himes' district in Connecticut was only gonna get $15 million. So obviously other cities were putting in money on top of it. So, um, you know, obviously we would have liked the entire grant put it, that we put in, but $1.4 million is still, you know, something to be happy with, um, especially since our usual annual rate for funding for sidewalks is about $325,000 between safe routes and new sidewalks as well. So that's about four plus years of projects uh, for just this one specific project that we got that we got funding for. So um, that's something that we're, we're very pleased about. And, um, you know, we're, we're hoping once everything kind of falls into place. We're going to get into the design phase and kind of work to advance that project now that the funding has kind of been allocated um, for us and other cities as well in, you know, in Jim Hines district have gotten funding for as well. So they, they also put in uh, some projects, but I don't think it was as large of an ask as ours was. So, um, so but we're, we're happy with it. And West Rock's project was submitted previously for lots of funding for the state years ago. Uh, but it was not approved. So the fact that we got it this time, we're, we're very pleased about. Um, and we want to set this trend going forward, um, going after, aggressively going after grants, um, especially with the list that we put together with shovel-ready projects for the future when grants do become available uh, with limited time like we had for this one. I think we had 10, 12 days to put this all together. So we really didn't have a lot of time. But the fact that we have this, um, this full list and we have data backing it and public outreach has already been completed for these projects is a big advantage for submitting these grants for future funding for these. 
So we're very pleased about that. Um, as Nancy alluded to, um, the connectivity grant, we're in the final stages of putting together the final designs for the state uh, for the DOT to review. Um, we've had a few meetings with the, with the DOT representatives um, and we're getting close to finalizing those designs before we put that final submit, submittal in. Um, obviously the project is gonna double the amount of bike lanes uh, throughout the length of the north, south and east, west route. Um, obviously the traffic authority approved the 10 foot travel lanes. Um, so we're, you know, that opens up not only for this project, but for future bike lanes for other roadways as well, which is very helpful as well um, that they approve that. So going forward, it kind of opens, uh, opens the door a little bit for some additional projects. So, um, and our, through our meetings, we discussed with DOT some new striping plans, especially along 136 to accommodate uh, five foot bike lanes and um, the possibility of bike boxes as well at a couple intersections. So um, they seem very positive with it as well, because it's something that they're looking to do more of on their state roads as well. So this will be kind of a demonstration project for them as well to start implementing um, best use practices uh, on these roadways. So we're, we're pretty pleased with that. And so are they as well. So I think they're, um, they're getting excited as well to get this, uh, to get this all approved. Um, and the city has requested FHWA for jurisdiction approval for the use of bike boxes and, and green uh, striping paint as well to develop the, the bike boxes as well. So we should be able to get those approvals and then we want to kind of use this as standard these standards for other bike boxes that might that we may want to target for intersections going forward in the future as well. So we'll kind of use this as a standard design that we use for the city. Um, you know, when we start designing uh, more intersection. Um, yeah. Greg, do, do you have uh, intersections in mind for the first bike boxes? So we're right now. So just for the connectivity grant, we're looking um, along Route 136 at Seaview Avenue, and then going on 136, going up um, and going in the other direction as well. So it's just that one intersection at Seaview and uh, Four Point Street. Okay, thanks. Looking them in both directions right now. So we're in discussions with the state right now um, to get that finalized. And then um, you know we talk about letter of support. Um, so the city is submitting a grant proposal um, uh, for from the Healthy Communities Grant Program uh, in order to assist a community-based project in installation, installing and planting um, trees uh, along designated neighborhood uh, street roadways. And the Norwalk Neighborhood Tree Canopy Improvement and Outreach is an initiative raising uh, citywide awareness to mitigate the adverse impact of canopy coverage loss and increase in impervious services around the, uh, the city. So TFP and the city is asking if the commission can write another letter of support um, at, for the grant as we asked for about $30,000 uh, to fund the West Main Street area um, and install and maintain new street trees on five roadways in the neighborhood. Um, the neighborhood is located just north of Route 1 and east of Route 7. Um, so obviously those two roadways see a very high level of, of traffic and um, obviously uh, insulation of this, you know, of the comprehensive con uh, canopy insulation, this magnitude will definitely provide some traffic calming and aesthetically um, the street trees will provide a little bit more of a pedestrian friendly neighborhood and kind of be a catalyst for future roadways that we look to target for street canopy improvement. Um, going forward uh, and other uh, street trees as well. Um, so if, you know, we definitely uh, would love the commission's help. Um, the, the demonstration project on the West, West Main Street uh, core, uh, neighborhood, um, it's being spearheaded by economic development and, and public works as well. Um, and TMP is also playing a major part in it as well. And um, leading up to um, the demonstration project as well, they're hold, they look to hold an event uh, next year uh, in April of 2022, as we kind of put this demonstration plan in progress where we look at community groups and um, kind of look for public outreach. And we also love the Bike Walk Commission um, to be a part of the education and community outreach uh, part of that uh, aspect of, of reaching out to the public and kind of being part of the, of the public outreach uh, portion of it. 
So that's definitely something. Obviously, it's so far away from now, but it's something that we would love to get on the radar for the Bike Walk Commission. And we'd love to get, um, you know, the support. And uh, especially since you all do a lot of the uh, a lot of outreach and education. Um, and it's something that the POCD also kind of alludes to as well, um, not only for the education aspect, but this, you know, our, the POCD's plan, POCD's plan for installation of trees is about 250 trees per year. This one is targeting for this specific project is targeting an additional 84 in tree installation along tree trees along the corridor um, on five different roadways. So this will definitely increase that number um, of trees that are looking to be installed uh, over the next year and hopefully more over the next future year. So yes, Tanner. Um, it sounds like given the, uh, the, the tree content here, um, would it, it might be useful to also solicit or, or um, you know, get, get a letter of, of support from um, organizations like the Tree Alliance? Yeah, so we've also, we've reached out to them and we've reached out to other um, alliance um, um, commissions and supporters of that as well. So they, they're, we've reached out to a lot of the um, uh, public outreach that we that are supportive of this tweet yes Audrey yeah I, I'm glad that you are um, you know there are there are some urban uh, forestry experts in our area there's a guy who just reported through Aspetuck Land, Land Trust uh, who's yeah. connected with Yale so there are you know I think we want to do our, our due diligence and speak to the people who are conducting some of the latest science on on trees uh, to determine which trees are going to survive best and create conditions that will allow the trees to, to thrive as well. So um, I hope there is kind of a, uh, a consortium or an outreach to, to some of the experts on the, the biological side to find out what we can do that will be best in the long run than to just plant usual tree, you know, street trees, and then they end up dying or something. So. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the Tree Advisory Committee, the North Tree Alliance, and uh, the Coalition of Norwalk Neighborhoods and, um, you know, on the city stakeholder side, you know, planning and zoning is another uh, department that we'd love to get involved in this as well. So it's it's kind of a citywide, um, you know, collaboration yeah. along with the community I, uh, groups I, as well. Yeah, I think it's good. It's not just an engineering project. It's yeah, a, it's becoming a stewardship project now. So right, right. We're all getting on board with that. Yeah, yep, that's for great. sure. Thank yep. you. Colin, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, Hold on. Yeah, my yeah, I'm on. Sorry, I thought my my microphone was off there. Um, yeah, what the neighborhood you said was West Main and uh, somewhere else, and you're looking at 84 trees. I just wanted to confirm that. Yeah, it's West Main in the West Main Street neighborhood. There's um, five streets um, that pretty much run parallel to each other. Um, okay, it, it's pretty much that whole uh, census block group. I believe it's track 434, block two. Yep. To be specific. So like West Main and Wilton Ave and yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. just Loudons north Barry and Fair Street, probably. Yeah, Maybe north okay. north of Route One. Yeah, we have we um we haven't quite finalized um well we we have finalized which streets um I don't have it right in front of me right now but um we have the we have the, the there's we have the neighborhood that we want. That so it, is there a reason why you're focusing on a residential neighborhood as opposed to a commercial district? Um, I when we looked at it, it was just more that the the pedestrian infrastructure, concrete sidewalks was there. And there was just kind of a, um, there was just kind of a separation between the sidewalk and the street that we felt as a demonstration project, this might be something that we initially target and put those tree, those these trees in um, for a start. As, and then as we grow and expand this, we can use that um, to kind of emulate uh, going forward and using those furniture zones, if you will as yep. you know, for street trees and then uh, expand on that. And do you have um, do you have any concerns with the existing power infrastructure? I just dropped the pin man from Google on on there and it looks like there's um, there's a surprising amount of trees on the street and some new ones with some some newer developments, but there also seems to be like some relatively low power lines that might conflict with some of your plans. I just wonder how you're addressing that. And, if that's just kind of forthcoming, uh, you know, to Audrey's point, you know, the we want the trees to do well and encourage them right. to grow tall and limb them up as necessary, but their canopy is going to very quickly, with that encouragement, get into the 
get into the power lines and you know i i love trees as much as the next guy but <laughs> uh, I, don't, don't want us all to lose power as a result i know what you're saying and i i think that's something that um i mean obviously where the placement of the trees is is going to be you know put they need to be put in the proper places um but i think that's something that we'll look at as we kind of get more more up the road a little bit um this is just kind of a we're putting together for the for the grants the middle yep. um and you know i think from there we'll kind of look at it kind of do a survey of the area on on in the field and see where the best place would be and with less impact to to the power grid okay can i, I have one more question before yeah. hopefully yeah. bump over to audrey um yeah. with the with the west rocks corridor work you were talking about is that mm -hmm. um is that happening before or after you repave because it, it i know it's I set think... to be paved it's set to be paved next year yes okay and do we have any other utility work going on there in the next couple of years that we're aware that, of you know we, we haven't i mean this has only been a month since we gotten approved for this grant so we still need to look at um how we're gonna do the design phase of it if we're gonna do it in-house are we gonna look to get a consultant Yep. Um, you know, we definitely have to go out and field inspect because obviously you can just say, yeah, let's just put a sidewalk is one thing. But when you go out there and say, well, we need a sidewalk and a retaining wall, we need a sidewalk and this and cost is going to, you know, go up. So yeah. it's something that we need to, you know, look at and delve more into more and see what utility work needs to be done on, on West Rocks. But I, I understand what you're saying for sure. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Yes. Uh, Christine or Audrey, I'm sorry, Audrey and then Christine. Yeah, I'll just make this quick. Um, yeah, I think uh, Greg and everyone, the, the latest tree science is very new. Um, so I think we're all trying to get up to speed. So that's why we all want to be very close knit with some of the nature groups and some of the experts in urban forestry, because this is really new stuff. So it's exciting and a great opportunity. Um, I was going to say about West Rocks, I don't know if you know, but uh, uh, Malta House, which is a residence for uh, homeless women who are pregnant or have small babies, um, lit, are moving in in June behind All Saints School on West Rocks. They were on East Avenue across the street from St. Thomas uh, Church. Uh, so there, you're going to have in that area on West Rocks um, uh, women with small children who might want to get out and walk around a little. So I think we do want to we want to look at who's who's living and and, and existing on West Rocks and what's needed no, and the school itself. Yeah, I don't know if you know they're moving there. Yeah, no, there's there's definitely um, you know points of interest uh, along the road, especially schools and uh, you know and just a uh, you know large uh, population and, and accessibility as well to yeah. you know either to Route Seven or to Route One as well. So. Yeah, protect, um, protecting pedestrians. Yeah, yeah it's really yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. Christine, go ahead. Uh, thanks, uh, Greg. Thanks for your work. I, I just wanted clarity, and I appreciate um, the remarks that have been made. The um, You said the grant was approved, but initially you asked for a letter from the commission. So is that soon you need the letter or is that next year after? I think it was soon, right? You want the letter? but Yeah, the letter. Is... Yeah. So the letter we would for the grant would be for um, we would need by the 20th uh, of May. Um, I mean, if possible, if we can, you know, if we can have it done by the end of next week, that would be even better. So we have time to put it together. Um, so that gives you a couple weeks uh, to do it. Um, the the demonstration project is until next April, but the the grant um, application and submittal is due uh, by May twentieth. So if we can have it by then, that would that would be definitely uh, much appreciated. And obviously, okay. we've reached out to other community stakeholders and groups as well uh, for their letters of support as well, uh, like we did last time. So um, any any little bit helps um, with any any uh, public uh, stakeholder um, letter, as you all know. So. Uh, any little bit can uh, certainly help. Yeah. So Nancy, I don't know if um, how we can do that with, you know, I would be willing to help maybe um, a couple other people who just made comments and, but is there's that rule we can't communicate about something on the email or something? Well, we're, we're not supposed to collaborate with one another outside of publicly noticed meetings. Um, 
But first of all, um, Greg has supplied a rather extensive list of talking points uh, for our letter. So it, it would really be more a matter, I think, of gleaning the information from the talking points and making a sensible sounding letter out of it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be, you know, in depth, detailed, it just, you know, obviously the, the benefits of, of the street trees and, and what they provide, not only to the public, but also the environment and uh, even just the traffic aspect as well. You can look at like traffic conning. And um, so that that's something that you can touch on the letter and then the list uh, that the interest points that uh, I provided to Nancy, um, you know, you can just, just touch on some of those in your in your um, letter as well. Yeah, I, I think what we would do, Greg, is take a look at your talking points and pick out the ones that relate to our mission. Okay. But, you know, some do and, and some don't so much. Okay. So, you know, as, as the Bike Walk Commission, we would <laughs> pick out those that made biking and walking in Norwalk safer and more attractive. And there's certainly plenty of those there. That's fine, yeah. That's fine, that'd be great. So Christine, I don't know if that really answers your question, but um, if you would like to work on it, I would be happy to send you the talking points. Sure. Okay, now, but before we do that, I think we have to make sure that the commission actually, Gary, are you, are you raising your hand or you have this twitch? <laughs> <laughs> Colin's raising his hand. I am raising my hand. Okay, uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, um, so Greg, thanks for coming to the meetings, first off. Mm -hmm. um, always appreciate that. Um, so West Rock sounds like a pretty large opportunity considering it's going to get repaved and <clears throat> you've uh, acquired this grant for sidewalk replacements. Do you, do we have a clear plan, a clear uh, drawing for the right of way for the whole stretch? We would, we would probably get it surveyed um, that specific. We have a right of way, um, you know, by each, you know, um, you know, the entirety you know, we have it, we have it in a layer, but it's not exact. So we would get it surveyed before we get into any design phase um, for the entire corridor. Okay. When you guys have time and coordinate with planning and zoning, they uh, cannot provide a definitive site plan of where the city property starts and where private property starts for the, for, let's say, West Rocks. Well, we, we have a, we have a, you know, a, a close enough line, but we would want to get a more definitive line. And that's why we have a outside consultant that handles a lot of the surveying and especially a project such as this magnitude, we would probably put it um, for surveying just to get a more exact line. And, you know, not only that, but for other utilities as well to see where all those are. So with that in mind, I mean, every close enough, where sometimes we're dealing, you're saying 11 foot lane, 10 foot lane, and all of a sudden we have a pipeline if we make it we go from 11 to 10. Um, it's just, I think, something that we should be mindful of for, for all our streets. Like West Rocks is a master plan bike route. I'm correct about that, I believe. Anyone want to second that? Gary, I'm having a little issue hearing you. You're kind of a little staticky. Oh, no. Is that better? A little yeah. better, yeah. A little better. Okay, yeah. I, we I can we can follow up a different time. Oh, that's much. You're much better now. Yeah, much better. Okay, sorry about that. So this uh, maybe this is something I just will make it a point. We can put it on the agenda for next meeting. Yeah. That um, I think we as a, as Norwalk need to have a very clear idea of our right of ways for the, for the type of work that this commission. Uh, wants to see done and, and knows is of tremendous value for the city. Um, West Rocks has asphalt curbs, I'm pretty sure. So basically we're open to, to reshape that entire corridor and it's a huge thoroughfare for, for the, and I, and I say thoroughfare, I don't mean traffic or heavy traffic or trucks thoroughfare, which is usually, I don't want to confuse anybody. Uh, it could be a, a tremendous uh, pedestrian and cycling thoroughfare. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't want to take up too much more time. Uh, 
that the survey, which is not a cheap uh, thing, is that would get covered by the grant or is that something that the city, you just opened up another idea in my mind, is that something we have a, a budget line for every year? If you don't know, that's okay. I don't, it's not yeah, I mean, for this project specifically, I mean, we haven't looked into, you know, large deep, you know, kind of small detail on what each cost is going to be. This is just kind of, you know, an overall cost of, the, of a proposed project. Um, obviously, there's going to be things that are found during a, you know, during a field survey and, you know, just yeah. going out and measuring and, you know, finding little things that are going to be added costs. So this, this is just kind of a, you know, an estimated cost of what, of what the corridor yeah. would be. Okay. But, but to be clear, um, the grant that we're talking about writing a letter f in support of right now is not the West Rocks grant. No, no, that's, that was for the community right. project grant that we, that we got right. that I initially right. started with. Okay. So right. since, since I think we were talking about uh, the letter in support of the tree canopy yes. uh, grant, um, Tanner. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to point out we um, we have a couple more members of the public and one of them has informed me that um, they need to get going pretty soon. They arrived just barely after our, our public comment. So um, I don't want to cut Greg short, but we if if we have a lot more to cover from Greg's report, if we could maybe pause and do some public comment and then come back. I just have one more thing to discuss, but if you want to go to them, absolutely go right well, ahead. Well, I'd, I'd like to wrap up the issue okay. of the supporting letter before yeah. we break. Um, uh, is the commission in favor of sending such a letter? And if so, I think it might be good to have it on the record. So could somebody move uh, that? Nancy, I'll, I'll, I'll move, but I have a question. I didn't get Greg's talking points. Were those just issued to you? Or were yes, they I the can agenda? send them. Unfortunately, I didn't get them in time to include with the agenda. Um, I can just, you know, I don't know that we want to take the time and read them tonight. Yeah. So but I, I can certainly send them to you um, after the meeting. So I, I'll move that we uh, support, or, or uh, I'll move that we send a letter of support. Send send a letter of support, um, pending review of the talking points and um, supporting those points that are aligned with the mission of the Bike Walk Commission. Well, um, Does that make sense, there, there's or? not going to be time to re for the entire commission to review the talking points. Ah, okay, so then I, I we write a letter in support of the tree canopy project in that district. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Okay, Tanner got his up first. You have to be a little quicker, Christine. <laughs> um. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Opposed? All right. Um, can um, the member of the public that would like to speak uh, raise his or her hand electronically? Okay, Brad. Um, can we empower Brad to speak? Norwalk Zoom 3. Okay, I'm here, Nancy, can you hear me? Yes. Great, not sure Brad, if you I'm wanna just here. introduce yourself for those people that don't know you? Sure, uh, my name is Brad Craighead and uh, I'm one of the co-founders of the Norwalk Green Association. And just for the record, Chelsea McCarthy, who uh, helps us on the technology side is also on the call. Um, for those of you who don't know her, I would encourage you to engage with her. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it, I just wanted, unfortunately, I wasn't present at the walk on Saturday morning. Chelsea was, obviously Tanner was, and others, Audrey. But we are uh, in the process of trying to, um, how would I put it, uh, reinvigorate or something, the effort around creating a pedestrian plan for the Norwalk Green neighborhood. Uh, which really is the junction of East Wall Street and East Avenue and Park Street. Um, we've uh, worked with uh, the support of Nancy and Judd and, and others over the years, and Mike Yosek, who I believe is on the call, to sort of advance this agenda. But I think COVID derailed it, amongst other things, and I'm not sure if, if things didn't move <clears throat> 
along for any other reason other than that. Um, clearly, we have the support of the neighborhood. And for those of you who aren't familiar with this area, I just want to make two quick points. One is the population density of this area surprises everyone. There are uh, over 1,000 full-time residents that live within five minutes walking distance of the center of the green. I'm happy to document that to anyone who doesn't believe that that's true. I have a building count of every single property within five minutes walking distance of the green. I can demonstrate how many people live here. Uh, that number does not include the two churches, excuse me, three churches and synagogue, right? nor does that include Mill Hill Historic Park or Human Services Council or some of the other things that are in our neighborhood that bring people to the area throughout the course of the week or the commercial office buildings that are here. In any case, we're not here to talk about the population density. We're here to talk about um, <clears throat> gathering further support to advance a pedestrian plan. Um, some, some years ago, there was a plan that was put forth by the city to put a crosswalk from Bettswood across over to basically the gazebo in the middle of the green. Um, we ended up with a crosswalk that helped connect the St. Paul's parishioners across East Avenue. And we got a second crosswalk put in in front of the First Congregational Church. Both the First Congregational Church and St. Paul's and Norwalk Historical Society are board members of the Norwalk Green Association in addition to most of the major stakeholders in the area. Uh, so with Audrey and Tanner's uh, support most recently, there was a curated walk led by Jackie Lightfield that uh, included the new uh, Reverend from St. Paul's and there's also new leadership from the First Congregational Church. So coming out of COVID, we are trying to gather support and raise awareness around this initiative, which at the very least is good for the residents, it's good for building community, it's good for the churches that face the green, but it's also uh, the gateway to Wall Street. And this is a primarily residential area where Wall Street, as we know, is more commercial, connecting the two, um, this ought to help. So just wanted to highlight that um, and look forward to uh, working with you all more in the future. So thanks for letting me get on the call. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Brad. And I know you and Audrey will continue to work together. Thanks, Nancy. All righty. Uh, Greg, back to you to finish up your report. Yes. So I just have one more thing to, to discuss with the commission. Um, we touched on this briefly uh, last meeting, but um, especially with all these projects and all these grants that we've been um, kind of putting together and collecting all these projects. Um, we obviously we continue to identify deficiencies in the pedestrian network. And as more money becomes available through the grants, we need uh, kind of a better inventory of the sidewalks um, throughout the city, which we just don't have uh, right now, whether they're footpath sidewalks or lack thereof of either one. Um, and we'd like to create a better inventory database of roadways with deficient and lack of sidewalks and neighborhoods throughout the city. Um, and we were looking at the bike commission, if we can help provide the city with any specific roadways and collect any of the current conditions of pedestrian facilities, uh, to determine where they are with, um, you know, without obviously relying on, you know, such heavily, you know, price surveys and, and other, uh, um, technology to, to find where the sidewalks are and where deficiencies are. Um, would this be something we're asking? We we'll want to see if this is something the commission um, would kind of like to take on as we kind of move forward. Um, you know, obviously not something that's got to be done right away, but something over time that the commission would, would want to be involved in. Yeah, um, Audrey, I think will tell you that the pedestrian committee has been looking at um, sidewalk audits. And I think, um, you know, you and she can probably get together so that uh, we can focus in on the areas that are a higher priority for you first. Right. Yeah. Because I think what, what we want to do is kind of create a database, if you will, and kind of a map display of where these sidewalks are and where they aren't and where the crossings are needed. Not so much just, oh, well, we have a couple of lists here of a couple of streets. We want to actually have everything because 
as you've seen from some of these grants, they come up and you got two weeks to get all your stuff together. And if we don't have it all together, we're not going to get it in and it's not going to happen. So obviously from the list of projects that we put in from the last grant, we had all that, that data and the detail and the mapping that we already had, had put together. And we were just able to put in some census data and other uh, items that really kind of improved uh, the grant submittal. So that's something that uh, we kind of want to be ahead of and not react to. We want to be proactive in it. Oh, Andre, did you want to say something? Now, now that I've committed you to doing that. <laughs> yeah, Tanner has his hand up. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a lot, Barbara Meyer Mitchell and I were able to assess a lot of disrupted uh, sidewalks uh, by satellite, Google satellite. Um, if you can't see it by on foot or by car, uh, there was a lot that we that we gleaned just from looking at satellite footage too, yeah. so. Um, well, that, that's something that we can, if, if the commission can, you know, kind of put something together and for the city, that would definitely be helpful on our end. Um, so we can kind of get ahead of it. Yeah. Uh, Tanner and then Colin. Yeah, thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Greg. Um, so this is something that I've been interested in for a long time. Um, in particular, I have um, a just a more general vision of a, a crowdsourced solution, something that not only the commission can contribute to, but also that we can farm out to um, interested volunteers all across the city. Um, this even came up in a discussion that Nancy and I had with Jim Travers and Judd and Garrett last week. Um, Jim also pointed out this is something that he's very interested in. Perhaps, um, perhaps this is kind yeah, of- Yeah, no, we, uh, yeah, Jim and I have discussed right. this at length and this is something that he wanted me to bring up to you tonight and because we, we want to have a, a better database of, of sidewalks and the conditions and um, we just don't have that at the city right now. And uh, you need current conditions to, if you want to know what's, what you have and, and what's needed. Yeah, yeah. I th think, um, Colin, I'll get to you in a minute. Um, you know, I think um, that, you know, Tanner and Audrey and Greg, uh, you guys probably need to get together and figure out how you could all work together to come out with the end product that will work for everybody. Colin? Yeah, uh, yeah kind of related to sidewalks. I just had a quick question for Greg um, and- You're muted. Nope. Uh, am I, am I yeah. talking? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, sorry. Um, it kind of related to to walk. Oh, you're muted again. Your computer apparently doesn't want you to talk. <laughs> no, it's a uh, it's a temporary unmute. It must be uh, you know very temporary. Um, so I noticed a a new crosswalk going in on a uh, Union and Eclipse uh, over by Tracy School. Um, just wondering if that where that project came from and who's doing it, what the timeline was, and if there were uh, more extensive improvements than just the crosswalk. Uh, I'm not aware of that at the moment. Um, I don't know. I don't I know. Saw, I saw Mike was on too. I was wondering if he. Yeah, might, I don't uh, know. If, I don't know if Mike's got a better idea of that than I do. So. Yeah, call, Colin. It's a TMP project. Uh, we put it in for the school, and we also we're also putting one on William Street. Just um, crosswalks William with Street. RFPs. Okay. Oh, with RFPs. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Thank okay. you. Uh, Gary, were you raising your hand there or are you just holding your head up? Oh, you're, you're I, got a, I got a quick, because of the uh, Eclipse uh, crosswalk, I just want to throw out the idea of- Yeah, uh, you're, you're kind of breaking up again. Uh, okay. I just want to throw out the idea of the uh, construction mitigation because those, uh, those two corners where they're going to be putting in the ped ramps, I guess they're, you uh, you can't cr you can no longer use the sidewalk. There's just a stop there. There's no uh, buffer zone to, in the roadway, and um, I don't know how long it will be like that. I know these kind of things are difficult, but it's something that it's uh, DPW should be uh, be instructed to perform. Is that what? Which intersection now are we speaking about? Is it eclipse. Uh, uh, eclipse in Union. Okay. There's a new crosswalk ramp going in with RFBs, as Mike Yosek pointed out. Yeah, um, you know, we do still have quite a lot of our agenda uh, going forward. So um, if we could try to keep our comments to uh, a minimum, I think that would be helpful. So just to be clear, the action item from this is that uh, Audrey and Greg and I are going to meet 
and talk more yes. about a sidewalk survey. Yeah, yep. and this is something that Garrett and Jim also are gonna be involved in as well. So we can all uh, discuss this and this is gonna be a long-term project, obviously. So okay, we'll start the email right there and I'll include all five of us. Okay, awesome. All right. That's all for me. Thank, Thank you. you, Greg. Um, Judd is not able to be here tonight, so we don't have a bike plan report. Uh, Barbara McCabe, events. Hi. Um, off the record, um, Connecticut, I just got an email. Connecticut became the first state in the union to be 50% fully vaccinated today. Yes. So, yeah, yes. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Uh, so uh, May is Bike Walk Month, uh, National Bike Walk Month. Uh, we cannot hold an official event because of COVID. Uh, um, so we're going to kind of have a name for it. I've kind of been calling it a gathering. Um, I'm going to do it around the bike repair station and do a demonstration of the bike repair station just to draw attention to Bike Month and to the, uh, the commission. Um, we've set it for Saturday, May 8th from 1 to 3 p.m. And I sent out an email to the commissioners and I've heard back from almost everyone, um, but um, I haven't sent it to all people on this call. And I, I plan on doing the, what I'm calling the invitation list uh, tomorrow morning. We're gonna invite NRBT and you know, there's people friendly to the, the commission, the health department um, and Sam, wonderful. Thank you, Sam is going to do a demonstrations on how to use the bike uh, repair station. Uh, again, it's going to be low key um, because of COVID and not wanting to try to get a permit and a few reasons like that. Um, any questions? Good. I hope I, I have see a you question. Saturday. Yeah, where where is it going to be on the eighth? Oh, that's a kind of important point, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to be where the NRDT starts. At Calf Pasture, where the flag is, it's okay. kind of near the women's restroom. There's a big map of uh, uh, an RBT there. There's, they've moved in the bike rack over, so it'll be there. And so that now that the repair station and the rack, it's in a, uh, I guess, kind of a birthed area. So, have have you thought about there. getting some inexpensive lawn signs to lead people over there who might not know it exists? Um, we're going to have our well, um, we don't want commission to flag the public. Oh, we don't. Went, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. I think after well, we, May 9th. I'm sending out the invitation and I think that. Right. Yeah, I think on May 19th, the, the governor is opening up uh, fully or something. What, you know, maybe that'll help us down the line. Yeah, we, can, we picked May 8th because uh, parking becomes. Um, a problem for certain people after the 15th. They start enforcing on the 15th. Okay, well, Barb, thank you very much for persevering through a challenging year for being the events chair. And we look forward to hopefully having some more in person events uh, this summer and fall. Okay. Uh, that we can call events. Christine, uh, Leave American Bicyclists Report. I know you have a, a lot of things to talk about, but if you could try to keep it concise, that would be great. Yep. Did we lose Christine? I think we lost. I think we lost her. No, I'm here. Sorry. Okay. Um, Sorry. I am going to, I synthesize the data and I will talk quickly. Um, so the League of American Bicyclists has been co sponsoring with the um, the it's called the NCUTDCD, so National Committee on Uniform Traffic Control Device. So I'm going to talk about that tonight. The MUTCD, so the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Device, and I hope some of you looked at the links that were sent out. And then I'm going to talk about another initiative with the league uh, for the echo counting. Echo counting. There's an opportunity. Um, but before I start, I just wanted to know, um, because I'm sure people can speak to this better, like Gary and uh, Mike, who, who uses the manual on the uniform traffic control? Because I guess the cities are, everybody has to, the, the municipalities are required by the law to use this. And it's how they design the streets and the safety and signage 
and intersections. And um, I'm just curious before I begin if, um, and Nancy, you've been involved with your work, but um, that would help me to, to while I speak here. The manual, who uses it? Who's familiar? Can you raise your hand if you're familiar with the manual? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're familiar with it, yeah. Okay, all right. So basically it hasn't been updated since 2009 and there's an opportunity for people to provide uh, input into it to make it better because right now it's being highly criticized for being um, car driven. So safety for vehicles and to increase traffic flow. So the partners that, that are now the ag advocacy groups and other organizations like the National Association of City Transportation Officials are very firm right now in, in requesting that it includes um, safety, equity, and livability. And right now it doesn't. And the, the Federal Highway Agency is closing off dialogue. So that is, so the um, National Association of City Transportation Officials sent a memorandum asking for the dialogue to be open and their input heard. Because right now, like for an example, 87% uh, higher fatalities among Blacks and in the country um, than non-Hispanics and whites. Because of the design of the roadways, which were, Historically, this was document was created with rural roads in mind, not urban centers. And people are now, you know, the trend is right, is for livability communities and walking. And um, so we have an opportunity to give comments. Directly after this meeting at eight o'clock, we have somebody on the board of the League of American Bicyclists who actually lives in Westport, Ken, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, Parza, who lives in Westport, who I'm inviting to speak to our commission at some point soon. However, this there's um, he's going to be talking about how to provide comments. So I'd like us to provide comments. The deadline for this is uh, May, I think it's the 13th for the comments. Um, but it's really an important opportunity. And I'm sorry that Jim is not on or Garrett to, um, to speak about this because I know Jim went to a webinar, I believe, on how to provide comments. So I don't know what their intentions are. It's May 14th, okay? So this is a 700 page document and there's a template that, the, that was in one of the links that was sent. All we have to do is add a few places. For example, like um, are there certain intersections we wanna mention in our comments, dangerous intersections? Do you have dangerous unmarked crosswalk or any intersections missing pedestrian signals? Do you want counter flow bike lanes? Are there these intersections that need bicycle signals? Do you want signs to tell people how far a place is away in terms of minutes? So I'm willing to go to this webinar at eight o'clock tonight. And if anybody does want to go, if, you, if you're not doing anything, ha ha, like having dinner at eight o'clock, well, I'll be happy to send it to you. Um, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell, Nancy. I think that that's kind of the quick version. There's a lot okay. to, but it's about equity. And if something is not in this manual, then it's illegal to do. And I'm sure um, Greg would speak to that, that it's a hindrance for local municipalities because they can't design something. They can't make an improvement without referring to the manual. If it's not in the manual, they can't do it. And any engineer is at risk for losing their license is what, is what I learned. So, um, and there's very few things in there about for bikes and pedestrians right now. So antiquated document, they're looking for stakeholders to collaborate, have an interdisciplinary approach and provide input. That's the first part of my little talk here. Um, any questions about that? Just a comment. Um, I did post about this on our Facebook page. So if you're looking to read more, go to our Facebook page and there's a, a good write-up about the motivations for submitting comment from America Walks. And while, yeah, while and you're there, like the page. <laughs> yeah, but I hope our organization, we can agree to submit. And um, like I said, it's due in the next two weeks. So um, I, 
I'd be interested to hear what um, Mike and Greg have to say, and, and and some of what Gary has to say. I, I've yeah. flipped I've flipped through it from uh, several times, and I, I think um, I don't want to say that you're mischaracterizing it, but I think you're mischaracterizing it a little bit um, in that it's it's a standard for the the control devices so the pavement markings and the signals and it's a little bit less of a design guide for the intersections so there's there's a little bit of a blurring of the lines there and i i i'd like to hear mike and greg and gary's take on that since they're uh professionally involved with it you know as opposed to you know i just casually look through it but um it, it's more like if you're painting a stripe like here's how long the stripe's supposed to be and how wide it's supposed to be in these scenarios and gives you some general guidance on um, how to mark a, a turn lane and things like that. But I don't think it, it has the specifics like the, the engineering that you're referring to. I think there's still the risk for the engineers, uh, which is why I'd like to hear from them, but it's not, um, it, it's not the place I think to contest, to, to, to say, you know, it's like, we've got a dangerous intersection or this is a dangerous, intersection uh, it's more you know we when you're installing these elements this is how they're supposed to be installed and the assemblage i think is is via other documents like the the ashto manual and the uh the the nat code design guides and the um the the uh, uh what's the other one the uh um, the transportation engineers the ite guides um but uh if, if greg and mike and, and gary can can chime in and, and just give two cents before we get involved in that discussion. That would be great. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, Colin. It's a, you know, it's a guideline that, that, you know, engineers use to design roadway improvements to keep consistency out there as you travel from state to state. Uh, you want to have, you know, a driver wants to know that a stop sign means the same thing in one state as in another state, just like a, just like the building code or anything. yeah it's i guess my point is that it's more of a it's more of a um uh a, a, a standard on the the markings and the signage than right, uh, right. than but the geometry is but it just it's just that if it's not in there they can't enhance it but i like i started the conversation i was hoping to hear from the engineers as well yeah. it, it's a, it's a slow process so to get things changed but there's experimental stuff that you can yeah because can request so because the same like there's been a lot of interim approval on things like the bike box for instance was an interim approval um that you know was adopted i think only you know five or six years ago um so they they do adopt things and put them in as they go along because i know even for the connectivity grant project um you know there's been some instances where you know the bike lane we had to look at you know, where do we end the bike lane if we run out of curb space? Um, and how do we go from a bike lane into a, sh a shared lane on a turn lane? And what's the best way to go about this? And, you know, the N MUTCD is, you know, kind of the, you know, the standard that we look at for striping and, and signage as well, what's needed, you know, uh, vehicles yield to cyclists and whatnot. So, um, you know, Mike and Colin are definitely right in that regard. It's just kind of a standard that we all have to look at. For any instance. So, Mike, um, would something covered under that that we've tried to lobby for several times and maybe a, a good public comment to address there would be uh, uh, temporary uh, paint markings and allowing uh, like a pilot program, like if we wanted to pilot a bike lane on a street and instead of scrubbing the paint at um, you know, a dollar a foot or whatever it costs to actually grind the paint out. Uh, would it be a reasonable comment to say temporary installations for, you know, less than a year or as part of a pilot program, the paint could be blacked prior to uh, um, being ground out uh, as part of a roadway, a, a more major roadway improvement? Would that be the kind of comment that we could make that might uh, do some good? Uh yeah, I'm not uh, sure. I'm not sure exactly, but I think they might allow that. But I, 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 need to I, I that. yeah, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to figure out what what we can comment on that would be that would be useful. You know, I mean, I, if it's something you know, in, uh, 
interim approvals or special approvals for bike boxes. We could comment that we'd like to see that adopted formally into the manual. Um, but I was trying to think of other things that, you know, cities might be doing that, uh, that would be helpful to, to lobby for. Yeah, I'd be inter interested in seeing what the, you know, American Walks and, and, and the other organizations are recommending. I mean, and we could probably- I've got that pulled up yeah. right here. If you okay. Yeah. Well, Jim, Jim was on the American Walks uh, webinar, at least he said he was going, and I went to it too. And that, that is an example of, so that Strawberry Hill intersection, that bike lane ends, and then it goes into the right turn for the vehicle. That's an example of the, that it's vehicle friendly and not bike friendly. And that's in the manual that has, like you said, Gary, the bike lane ends. That, that, that's a good point. I think the, you know, bike lanes and intersections, they're still, everybody's still working on what solution works best for those. So that's something that, you know, the manual hasn't really addressed well. So it's probably something that needs to be, you know, researched. That's a, that's a good one, I think. Yeah. Say, Mike, Mike, does TRB look at um, a lot of the interim approvals that they, you know, for, in, for uh, measures that are, that are being looked at for improvements? Yeah, they go through a lot of research, in, you know, uh, you know, research projects either, at, you know, on the state or a local yeah. level. I mean, some some of the bigger cities will investigate some of the stuff that have the, you know, the staff going to do like, uh, you know, like New York will get some internal in, in term approvals or, uh, you know, uh, on the West Coast, there's a couple that, that right. you know, specialize in the bike stuff like Portland, I believe. Yeah, I think the, you know, the reality of this, though, is there's really no way that we can get ourselves organized to comment by next week. So well, actually, the letter is already written. So we just sent our name to it. I, that's one of the links. And we don't have to make specific comments. We can just say, yes, we agree. It needs to be uh, revised. And um, as 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 an agency. So. Um. Gary, okay. did you want to say something from the engineering point of view here? My, microphone, Gary. How about that? Better. All right. Connecticut State DOT must have their recommendations that they've already put together. Uh, and Jim Travers should go and get that and we should look at it. I'm sure it'd be of interest to us. Well, Jim did attend the, the Monday session by America Walks and thought it was very biased. Oh, that's good. It's an interesting. Biased or biased in what sense? Um, I think he felt that um, the America Walks people were, uh, I'm not quite sure how to say this, but um, they, they, well, I forget what the title of, of the seminar was, but it, it indicated that they were definitely thinking that the MUTCD was terribly outdated and of virtually no use. I think uh, they called it the notorious MUTCD, which was yeah. attributed, I think, to the Secretary. Yes, I think that was it. Um, so uh, I, that's why I was hoping he would be here tonight. Um, but do the, do the commissioners feel this is something that we want to attempt to pursue within the next week? Well, well okay. But like I'll, I said, it's I'll just a template. Yeah, I'll yeah. read the link, but I, I mean, I'm more comfortable sending mine in by myself, I think, if, mm -hmm. I, if I choose to. Um, oh, yeah. I, I mean, re a revision is, is warranted for sure, um, but I, it, it sounds to me that the the fight against it is they're, they're kind of picking the wrong document. You know, it's really just a standardization document for signs and stripes and, and lane markings. You know, it's like, if you, if you crack open the 700 pages and you flip through it, it's, it's not, it's not the geometric, you know, considerations that you find in the, the NACTO document or even in the, um, Institute for Traffic Engineers handbook, you know, it's like, those are much more meaningful documents, I think, to, to, um, to move the needle in terms of design or the Ashto book even, which is the, really, I think that's got, um, Mike and Greg can, can clarify this for me, but I think that's where all your geometries come from with your, 
your super elevation and your your radius of curvature and the things that affect the the actual design performance design of the vehicles uh, as opposed to the MUTCD, which is just again yeah, si it's signs signs and paint. It's the well, manual well, of uniform traffic control devices. It's right. As but what, I, but, yeah. I think Mike said it's it really what it's striving to do is to say that you know, all 50 states are going to use the same stop sign. Yeah. That every well, state's not going to make right. their own. Well, but they have things like a picture of an animal that we don't have in Connecticut. So but <laughs> the other but the other point is that and Mike probably knows better is that it limits the um, the local government to make any changes. Um, so it would by by changing this document, it could then give get more money to the cities to to then to to the maintain and things like that. There's something with the intersection, mm -hmm. no pun intended, with this the, the local and the federal uh, agency. To make changes, Christine, there will be changes. You understand that that's a given. This, it, it, the last revision, the full division, not uh, what Greg was talking about some of these interim things, which happen all the time. The interim stuff was two thousand nine, and so there, this will be a tremendous revision to it, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, Tanner. Okay. In the interest of time, I want to move to. Uh, to say that the commission's position on this is that we should all go read up about it and inform ourselves and then submit our own personal statements. I, I think that personally, I'm, I'm, I, I see things from Christine's point of view. I think that this could be potentially something to, um, to move the needle on, but I haven't educated myself as much as clearly people like Colin and Gary have. Well, so, the, the, yeah, the agenda has a number of links in it. Great. All right. Well, well, and the th template is pretty harmless. It's pretty, um, it's not, it's not, the template that the letter's already written, it's, it's pretty, I mean, it's simple. It's nothing like really. Well, in, unless there's somebody who strongly feels the commission as a commission should take a stand, I'd kind of like to move on. Okay. Well, but, I have one more thing. I mean, I do feel strongly, but that's okay. I um, wanted to talk about the second, uh, the initiative the league is doing about, um, Somebody brought this up at the last meeting, echo counters, but there's an opportunity to receive an award if we have bike data uh, somewhere that we wanna submit and try to win a competition. It's a national competition. And then if we win using these five points of um, bike data that we submit, um, we could get the echo counters and have people help us with our data. So like our prior conversation about the pedestrian data this is an opportunity to, to it's the chances are pretty slim and I don't even know if we have bike data somewhere with five. What, what kind of bike data? Like something in the past one to three years of um, any bike data, they said they didn't specify if we have anything that we want help streamline it by winning the award to do that. Uh, in the interest of time, Christine, can I take this offline with you? Um, I've been, I've opened up a thread with Jim Travers about um, doing bike counts, especially this upcoming summer in advance of the, the new bike lanes that are going in. But right. thank you. I am, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. you. Money, That's my report. Okay. Um, Audrey, the pedestrian committee. Okay, the pressure's on. I've got to move fast. <laughs> uh, we did not meet, the pedestrian committee did not meet in April. Uh, uh, just didn't feel we had enough content, a lot, of, a lot of balls in the air, a lot of things not landing yet. Uh, our focus, I think going forward is gonna be on uh, specific projects uh, related to schools. Uh, and I've spoken with Mike Yosak, we have some uh, pedestrian signage, the stanchion type of signage that is weighted and sits in the middle of a crosswalk that there are three schools identified that could really use that. And they come with a caveat that the school or somebody needs to take ownership of them and bring them off, pull them off the, the crosswalk if there's a, a, a snowstorm so the snow plows can go through. So they need a, a level of maintenance. Um, so the, the big news, uh, and um, I, I, can share, I can share screen, uh, is we've been focusing on uh, curated walks 
Uh, and I want to do, let's see if I can do full screen mode. All right. So um, there have been in the last uh, three weeks, two curated walks uh, along the town green uh, as, a, as a major focus. This is a, a, a key historic point uh, and focal point in our city. Uh, and the first walk I, I did led by Jackie Lightfield, who is a, an amazing wealth of, of history and information about this, how the city operates. Uh, Lisa Shanahan, Tom Livingston, and T David Hubelman, uh, common council members. And uh, then on Saturday, uh, there was another curated walk with myself, Tanner, uh, Father Daniel Simons from St. Paul's, and Chelsea McCarthy uh, from uh, the Town Green Association that Brad mentioned earlier, uh, representative from that, um, that association and Jackie Lightfield again. And what we've done is we've started to identify, whoop. <laughs> we started to identify spots uh, that where there are walkways across the, the town green with a curb cut to nowhere, essentially, no crosswalk to the other side. Um, at the very top right, there's a circle uh, that's a soft left turn that cars just whip around on, right in front of a crosswalk. So there's infrastructure, there's opportunity. Um, there are quick right turns for, for cars that go right, in, lead right into, uh, into a crosswalk. There's a lot of dangerous spots for pedestrians and bicyclists. So we wanna make the town green a whole lot safer and more welcoming uh, as, a, as a tremendous focal point for the city and all the way down to, uh, to Wall Street. So um, I'm not gonna go too much into the map except that it's becoming a working map. Tanner's created a, a Google doc that can be uh, updated as well, but this was my satellite version. Um, and then we started talking about um, some solutions. Solutions in other cities can include uh, community engagement in terms of placemaking where there's really paint on pavement. Um, on the right side, you, this is a, a town in Vermont that has created, like other cities, a blue lane or purple lane um, with bumpers or, or some hardscaping to keep cars away from bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, on the right side, there are bumpers, which is similar to something we wanna do on the town green, uh, if, if possible, to make a soft left turn for people on East Avenue uh, with plant uh, using uh, plants. Excuse me, Audrey, are you yeah. flipping pages? No, I just my, flipped a page. Oh, because yeah, my, mine's frozen. Oh, yeah. I'll send it to you, okay. Colin. I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, also, could you. Could you actually send it to the whole commission, Audrey? I can, yes. Walking, walking tours like we've been doing public art. There's a, you know, there's a lot of solutions besides just engineering that can, we want to engage the community as well. So that's just an idea. Um, Tanner and I talked about something called the slow roll, which uh, I'm from Detroit. Originally uh, in Detroit and now in Chicago, and I think uh, some other cities where cyclists go on a tour of different parts of a city. And I'm also a board member of the Norwalk Land Trust. So last Saturday, we had a cleanup at um, Farm Creek. And a few of the Land Trust members were kind of interested in this. We talked about maybe a gathering of bicyclists at Fodor Farm, which is a destination some people haven't been to, plenty of parking uh, or biking. And going down Flax Hill to Highland, all the way down to Farm Creek, people could take a break, bring a little lunch, and, and then come on back. Um, there's lots of different opportunities, I think, for, for something like a slow roll. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And then uh, in terms of the NRVT, Nancy might know something about this. Uh, again, uh, I noticed along Spring Hill Avenue, um, above this, the Riverside Cemetery, which is above the new missing link for NRVT, there are some breaks in the walls and the, and, the, and the woods that lead right down into the roadways within the cemetery that would bring you all the way down to the NRVT as connectivity for all of those neighborhoods you see on the, on the left there. Um, so, you know, within that, that little circle there, you see like a little, little, a little paved area or a little, uh, a little stretch of lawn there that's actually tire marks. So there, there are cut throughs that, that bring people from 
the neighborhoods above the NRVT missing link through the cemetery straight down to the new trail as a, as a vein to an artery. And I'm just wondering whether, whether the NRVT has a relationship already with the cemetery, because if not, I'm gonna reach out to them. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay, so, you know, Tanner and I are starting to look at what are the veins, what are the, what are the tributaries that will bring the neighboring neighborhoods to the NRVT, which is a north-south uh, artery. So we found some opportunities there and we'd like to pursue it um, and make it a little more, not super formal, but just a, a way to bring all these neighborhoods safely. They don't have to even go on to Spring Hill. They just go through all the little neighborhoods and go right through the, through the cemetery, straight to the NRVT. So this was our brainstorm or over the weekend. Okay, thank, thank you, Audrey. You're welcome. Um, Tanner, social media. Uh, yeah, so um, we continue to post, and by we, it's mostly me, but also I've had some help from Julia Green from the, the health department. A um, couple highlights. Um, I've been trying to engage people to comment on our posts a little more, and I've gotten a couple of comments from people that I, I don't know, like strangers, legitimate strangers. Um, perhaps there are people who have engaged before, and I just don't know them. Um, but uh, in particular, um, I posted about um, about shortening crosswalks by creating more pedestrian space, and somebody suggested um, uh, a person by the name of Brian Boland suggested that we do such a treatment at the intersection of Gregory and Old Sagatuck. And in fact, the, the crosswalk across Old Sagatuck as it tees into Gregory is quite long. Um, so I've, I've put that on the, the map that Audrey mentioned. I've got a, a, a custom Google map that I'm, I'm tracking all ideas that come from anywhere, um, regardless of merit, <laughs> basically. Um, although I think that one is a pretty good idea. And then um, I posted a graphic about all the different ways that cities can make um, their environment better for cyclists. And I got um, a comment about protected bike lanes and secure bike parking um, from somebody that I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna continue to try and, and get more public input that way. Um, I like the direction it's going. Um, I wanna report that our, when I started, when I took over social media, we were at 120 followers, 120 likes, and we're now at 180. So we've, we've hit the 50% growth milestone, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, it's terrific. We're gonna, we're gonna try and keep growing. Um, and then the last announcement is that um, Chelsea McCarthy, who is on this call as um, a member of the public, um, she, like Brad mentioned, she works with, um, or I don't know if Brad mentioned it, she works with Brad on the um, social media for the, the Norwalk Green Neighborhood Association. Um, and she's volunteered to also help me out with social media, which I, which help I will certainly need. Oh, terrific. Uh, in my increased responsibilities. Um, but I wanted to also open that up to anybody Anybody in attendance, um, if you're interested in being more involved in the social media presence that we have, um, I I see it as a huge um, room, huge room for growth, a lot of potential in, in terms of uh, relating to the public, getting public comment, and also um, doing, you know, providing information and education to the public. Um, it's it's how it's how information gets shared these days. Um, so I'm going to need a lot of help um, if you are interested at all in helping with social media talk to me. And I think it's going to be a good way to perhaps recruit some more people to help the commission in general. Um, oh, yeah, yes. I would just, I would just add, you know, our library is a, is a great resource for disseminating, disseminating information as well. Um, they reach a, a lot of people. Um, so uh, I wouldn't, I would say, let's figure out a way to stay in touch with the library. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. Just one-on-one -on -one, Audrey. I want to hear more about how that might be done. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next is the strategic plan and um, the update was shared with you in the agenda, but I'm going to share my screen and uh, fairly quickly just highlight what's new. And again, um, you've, you've all seen um, the strategic plan before and um, the first one is around the east, west, and north, south bike routes. And uh, Greg has certainly um, updated us consistently about how that's going. And we certainly look for them to 
um, submit the um, thing to the state soon so that hopefully we can get going on this in the not too distant future. We're hoping for this year to be installed. We're, we're, we're trying, we're targeting that. All right, great. And the second one is the pedestrian plan. And uh, we did update the assistance we provided to the Tracy Magnet School with their parking. And as you've heard tonight in from several different angles, there's a lot going on with the pedestrian committee. So uh, look for a lot more from them in, in the coming uh, months. Uh, the POCD, um, there's really nothing to update. Um, Tanner has a list of all of the tasks in the POCD for which we are one of the uh, participants. We are not the lead on any of them. And I know he's keeping an eye on all of that and hoping that uh, we'll get started on some of those soon. So you should see in the coming months, perhaps some activity in that area as well. Um, the fifth one is uh, the, our community outreach events and uh, we're having one on Saturday. So hopefully um, all of you will be able to at least stop by if not to be there for a significant chunk of time. And the last is applying for grants. And as you know, we, thanks to Audrey did apply for one which we did not receive. And uh, I didn't put it in here, but maybe we should that we have been helping TMP by uh, sending letters of support into grants that they're applying for. So is there, are there any uh, questions or additions on the uh, strategic plan report? As I say, there's not a whole lot that's new this month. Okay, if not, uh, Teresa did tell me a couple of days ago that she was not able to join us. So uh, we don't have a walking update. And well, Nancy, uh, yeah. Nancy uh, Julia has been uh, recording a lot of the, uh, the walking walking paths for that are part of the Norwalker program. And uh, she came over and I walked with her with a few other neighbors over at uh, Oak Hills Park oh, okay. uh, a couple of weeks ago. And she did a record, what she does is she does a recording along the walkway and has been posting that on uh, the health department website. And I think bike walk, right? Tanner, hasn't she puts, do you have something on there for that? Um, Sorry, I was zoned out, say that again. Oh, Julia, Julia's been recording Norwalker uh, walking paths. And uh, I think she said she was going to make the link available. It's on the Facebook page, I think, for. Uh, yeah, she's made at least one post department. recently about a Norwalker route. That's true. Yeah, she's been recording those. And Barbara McCabe also has been uh, uh, honing her skills in, also in recording uh, nice pedestrian uh, walking areas around the city. So uh, there's some stuff going on with that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Audrey. So um, Tanner, can you are the new business item on the Oyster Festival participation? Yeah, so um, we are two minutes over. I'm sorry about that. Um, I remember hearing from somebody that in the past, the Bike Walk Commission has run valet bike parking at the Oyster Festival. Is that true? I don't remember it. Um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, do you remember us ever doing that? I, I don't remember now. That, I mean, maybe that was Peter and Mike running around with <laughs> with, with other people's bicycles. And it, it could be that I'm, I'm explaining it with, with some other bike group in some other city. Um, in any event, um, is that something that uh, that the Oyster Festival might be amenable to? Is it something that, that you as commissioners or other people think would be um, well received by the community? Is it something that we could do? Well, my one concern would be how we would staff it because it's a lot of hours to cover. Sure. Um, does the festival run a Saturday, Sunday? Is it a single weekend? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. And it's basically all day. Mm -hmm. And night. Yeah, oh, that's true. Um, that's a good point. Um, any other points? Uh, I, I like the idea of like, maybe not valet, but um maybe there's there's usually room at the gate for some sort of corral perhaps if you um showed up it would, could be a separate queue and you could get uh, maybe we could sponsor the 
uh, race racks or whatever, you know, the ones like that they do at triathlons that are the kind of the tent, the, the pup tent style where you just hang your bike by the seat post. Um, you just like hook, hook the saddle over the bar and, and the bike kind of stays there. And if it was in a secured area inside the festival, you could park your bike, uh, you know, for free maybe, and then get in, uh, you know, get in the, um, festival that way. Uh, or maybe there could be secure parking as well at the bus locations so that you could ride to the, to the bus locations and leave your bike somewhere that's, um, somewhat secured. I, I like the idea of, of promoting, uh, you know, intermodal transit and, um, and having some way of getting to the festival by bike and having your bike be safe and monitored. Perhaps the next best question is, um, who would we talk to? Does anybody have a connection with somebody who runs the Oyster Festival? That's the Seaport Association, I believe, puts it on. I don't have any direct contacts there, but. I have a loose contact. <laughs> you could probably just call or email the Seaport Association. They're um, right. They're right across from Betts Park in that shopping center. Okay. Um, is, is anybody, given that I have committed to a lot, <laughs> is there anybody else who is interested enough in this that they could take on contact in the Seaport Association? Yep. So, we'll that. Awesome. That'd be great. It's not far from where you live, Sam. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I think that concludes our agenda. So could we have a motion to adjourn? Tanner, a second. You can't leave unless somebody seconds it. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, thank you all for your participation. I think, you know, once again, we had a, a very full meeting and uh, a lot of good discussion. So have a good evening. Thanks, everybody. Have a good Bye. night. Thank you. Thanks so much. Good night.